is Network, and uh, I'm um, here uh, with uh, some people I know who are artists, and our critical conversation uh, this evening is uh, about Christian art, and we've got this uh, fascinating uh, possible discussion coming up uh, about a new organization that started here in Colorado that wants to uh, go national eventually, if not internationally, and kind of shake up and change uh, the place of Christian art within the larger art world. And our our, our major uh, uh, person and guest tonight is uh, uh, Professor Sandra Sees, who is, I have to admit, full disclosure, is a former uh, graduate student of mine who's uh, been around a lot. She's a, a very well-known international artist. Uh, she's uh, also an art professor, has taught at the Rocky Mountain Institute for Art and Design, and is uh, currently uh, adjuncting uh, at different places. And uh, uh, her work is just interesting and amazing. Uh, without too much ado, I'm going to turn it over to our guests, and I'm going to let her introduce herself, as we do in these uh, critical conversations, and then we'll uh, uh, turn to our next discussant. Uh, who's right next to her, uh, Katina Lowe, who's also an artist, and then um, uh, we have we have one more once he gets back online. So, uh, Sandy, go ahead, sir. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Good evening. Um, as Carl said, I am an artist, and I consider myself an artist and an educator. Um, I think I was born with a gift to uh, communicate through visual arts versus text and literary works, and even as a child I continued to express myself in various ways that would be considered artistic. Um, after formal education, I did go into uh, teaching around the country at various colleges about the arts from a number of different ways, whether it was commercial or fine arts. You know. And then I also went on to get a master's, as Carl said, at the Denver University. Um, Carl was my mentor and professor in religious studies. So at this point in my life, as you can see by my hair, I've got some history behind me and um, some linkage of what was then and what is now. And when I finished that last degree, I felt myself trying to understand how I would connect um, the talents and gifts of being an artist but also the heartfelt um, interest in religion in religious studies. So um, I think that's where I began to uh, spend some time just making my artwork uh, turn to a different direction. Uh, my art in the past had always been um, more public intervention, uh, community outreach, um, art that was being used as a language to just talk about difficult issues. And then I found myself traveling the globe to do that. I was invited to numerous cultural centers to uh, come as an artist because artists have a way of breaking down boundaries in cultural areas where if you may not know the language, at least through art, you can communicate. So I think that was the first indicator that art had a power um, way beyond just satisfying our own needs as an artist to um, put a work together. So um, Isaac, who's on our panel discussion tonight, is also um, an artist who I met years ago who went on a cultural adventure with me. Um, we met in Juarez, Mexico, where I took a group of students and a couple of other artists down there to uh, intervene in a community through the arts. This was a neighborhood that had um, kind of broken communication. Um, there was a, a kitchen there that was feeding children. Uh, there was like a breakdown in understanding who was connected to who. So Friends of Isaac's had a um, building there that we as an art team went down and took over and invited the community to come in and make art. And through that encounter is when I started to realize how powerful art could be to just build relationships and um, just share good times together. It gave us an opportunity to share our worldviews, our concerns, um, and to learn a lot about the community in which we were in. So maybe Isaac will talk about that a little bit later too. Um, I also got a great opportunity to go to Morocco. I was invited to go um, to a brand new cultural art center. I was invited because I have a background in street art or intervention art. 
where you go out in the streets and encounter people and try to have some exchanges. Um, so I went to Morocco um, with the request that I link up some American students with some Moroccan students to have conversations about their varying lifestyles. So we spent some time on the streets and we collected some trash together, which seems to be something we also did in Juarez, kind of a cleanup or just a way of randomly gathering uh, materials for art. And then um, in Morocco, we did put together um, a very fun piece that did break down some barriers where we could have some conversations about the differences between the two cultures of America and Morocco. So after having a few experiences like that, I started to see um, a doorway open for me personally um, where art and um, religion could come together and have a voice. So little by little I quietly just um, accepted any invitations that would further something like that. Um, my artwork itself started to make some changes into the topics that I would address. I found that my eyes and ears and my heart was very open to um, whatever was happening around the world. I mean, I took a special interest in the Middle East, um, not only having experienced um, Morocco, but I also spent some time in Israel. And so a lot of my work did kind of focus on the conflicts, um, the two different cultures of humanity that were struggling against each other. So um, my work was sort of heading in that direction. I also looked at um, what was going on in Nigeria, um, again, coming from a religious perspective and also from an art perspective. So as my work turned um, and I got invited to spend more time at different places and speaking about it at conferences, um, I started to take a step back and say, well then what can I personally do uh, to get myself around some of these experiences and to um, bring them together in a, something that's proactive. And that's where um, what we're going to talk about this evening. I mean, Carl mentioned that we're going to talk about Christian art, but that's a very difficult position to start from because it has a history of carrying a lot of baggage that we really don't want to have to unpack. Um, I find myself often, if I try to explain where we're going with our gathering of artists, it's artists that have Christian faith rather than labeling us up front just as Christian artists. We're artists that are feeling as though we've been gifted um, with our talents, our artistic talents, that they didn't just come from within ourselves and from anywhere out in the cyber world or in the cosmos. We believe that, that the gift is a talent that was delivered to us through the God that we believe in. And so as believers in the Christian faith, we've come together as a collective to um, find ways to uh, bring our gifts and to serve the Lord with that. So when Carl mentioned um, gathering today, today or tonight to um, kind of talk about that, I'm going to turn over some of the time to the, the other two members that are here. But first, before I do that, um, I'm going to tell you how it kind of kicked off. Uh, for oh, me, could I, could I get other, introduce the other two people before we get into the substance? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, Isaac, um, so this is Isaac Carter. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, thanks, Carl. Um, just a quick, yeah, I, short introduction. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a painter primarily, but I also work with found objects. Um, I find that um, using found and discarded material um, often lends itself very well to the <coughs> overall story of, um, I guess, redemption that uh, I, I kind of want to put forth in my art. So, and um, Sandy asked me, if, like she, she mentioned we met uh, down in Juarez, Mexico. Um, and, um, so, yeah, she asked me to be part of this group, and I, I jumped in. Okay, Katina. Katina Lowe. Yes. Um, well, I also have a master's in fine art from Cranbrook Academy of Art, and I currently am also a, a adjunct professor professor at a few places and I work with high school students as well. Um, as for my artwork, my favorite of course is installation. You know, the bigger the better. I love adding elements of social experiment and discovery to my work. Um, a lot of um, color and vibrancy, but I, I also do traditional 
painting, drawing, um, and you know, just just anything that fits my ideas. And as for being a, a Christian artist or an artist of Christian faith, um, that has been a struggle because of what Sandy was saying in terms of it's a very difficult place to be in uh, right now as a artist of Christian faith because um, the arts have definitely gone in a trajectory away from the old school renaissance and masters type of um, religious hierarchy kind of political systems and therefore it's gone so much in the other direction that we're, we're almost vilified in some artistic circles so it is a very interesting place and I think that um, when Sandy approached me about Christos Collective I was just excited because I knew this was going to be a group of very talented, educated, um, respectful artists who have a compassion for people and a true heart for Christ, and um, that they would be making a difference in the art world and not and not portraying that that opposite side that we often see that people become so abrasive towards. So um, I really appreciate. Sandy asking me into the group, and I'm delighted to be here today. Great. Okay, Sandy, I'll, I'll let you continue on the thread you were on there. Uh, um, go ahead. Okay. But um, Patina introduced the title of our collective, which is Christos Collective. Um, and what I was going to begin with was the fact that I was struggling with all that I was doing and trying to find a way to put together the art and the religion or the faith. And um, it, to me it was a calling. I felt being led. I, I, I knew when I woke up one morning that it was time. It was time to no longer just think about it. That it was time to take the risk and to actually uh, move forward and see what could happen if I called out some people to join me in this calling. Um, so, like all creativity, we take something from the past and we mix it with the new of what we assume and we go from there to see where it goes. Um, I had known Isaac from the past, I had known a few of the other members um, that I had done projects with, and then there was a bunch of uh, members that I didn't know, but I knew of their name through another organization, and I just sent out some emails, and that's where Katina came along, and just made a date, um, opened my home, and decided to call together. I believe I probably invited mm, maybe about 20 some people to show up and before the evening was over um, the door had welcomed 12 people and some people within the group knew me, some did not, they met me for the first time. People within the group knew each other from other encounters. Um, it was, our first few moments of just gathering was an affirmation that um, there was someone above me calling this together. And that's where I feel that when you are obedient to a calling from God, that he usually has his hand over everything and orchestrates a lot more than you can actually imagine. So as a Christian, this is what we believe. You know, we believe this happened naturally. And the group came together. We got to know each other. Um, we started to make some just spontaneous um, comments to each other about how we felt about our art how we felt um, about ourselves as Christians. We struggled a lot with that concept of titling Christian artist. I mean, I even took a wild uh, adventure on LinkedIn asking people to, to define what that was, and it, got, it was um, very, very uh, enlightening, let's put it that way. And it also made me realize that we really need to seriously address um, that kind of stained situation um, and come at it with a new perspective. Um, the title Christos um, was delivered by Carl. You know, he was part of our group from the start, and we tossed around ways of including um, a title that would share both aspects, the art and, the, and our belief in um, Christ. So um, soon people were coming and going, coming and going, and we've actually met for mm, maybe about 14, 15 months now. And I feel like what I'm starting to call ourselves um, a founders group. You know, we are like the early stages of um, the founding members. We've started to, we have gone and become an LLC at this point so that we could collect dues and um, have 
meeting notes and a board de starting to develop so that we have a presence that um, would make us legitimate and serious and considered uh, something that we can step out into the general public and say, this is who we are and this is where we're going. Um, so I'd like maybe to have Katina and Isaac to step up and speak to how they responded when we first got together and um, from then to now. So, okay. Katina? Um, well, I was thrilled when I got Sandy's email. I mean, I had graduated from my MFA and had not really found a community um, and was just getting going with teaching and kind of struggling to keep making art because when you are um, an adjunct and you are all over the place with teaching or, and you know, I, I was also at a high school and I tutor English actually, so I was just all over the place. It's, it's hard to, to get good critique in that community again, which I had in grad school and I'm so used to not having a, a Christian community of artists that um, at times it was very disheartening, especially in, in graduate school where the, the opinions could be uh, strongly against, although there's also, I saw a lot of people have strong opinions for or, or interested. I mean, once you say, I'm a Christian artist of faith, you automatically start a conversation and these conversations are you know lively and they're filled with everybody's baggage and everybody's stereotypes and all sorts of wonderful things that we as Christians who deal with relationships on um, a very personal and serious level uh, that's very important to us and I, I missed that community that I had in graduate school even though it was artists of different faith or no faith. Um, so when Sandy started Christos, I was like, wow, I can, I can be encouraged. I can um, be critiqued like I was in graduate school at, at a very professional level. And so um, I was thrilled. And as we've grown as a group throughout the 14 months, we've really we really stretch those boundaries. We, we do critique each other's work pretty much at every meeting. There's somebody showing work and having insightful critique made of the, of the work. And um, we're praying together and we're sharing meals together. So all the basics of fellowship and um, strengthening of each other um, are all happening. And uh, it's just brilliant to see and so many people are growing so much already and we've already have you know shows on the horizon and with big plans ahead so things are definitely moving as they should and as Sandy may mention later we're going to see about getting nonprofit status just to um, maybe perhaps do more outreach opportunities within the community um, education workshops that kind of thing so oh, I, I think we're trucking right along. So watch out, world. Here we come. <laughs> okay. Isaac, I see I made it yeah. back. I think we were sharing um, yep. about first experiences at Wood Christos. Yes. Do you, do, you, do you have something you want to share about kind of your response to this and kind of your your take on where it's going and your own personal role in it and so forth? I guess we lost them. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, oh, are you there? Are you here? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry, share <laughs> the... You wanted me to share my take on the role of Christos within... Uh, yeah, just... Well, I think that's what Sandy was asking. It's just like, uh, you know, how you came into this and where you see it going and what this means for you as an artist. Right. Um, well, like like Sandy and Katina said, I really feel strongly about um, using the gifts that God has given us um, for, you know, not just uh, as worship, but... Um, in excellence, you know, to really push 
the boundaries and the envelope um, as far as um, is what we can do with what he has given us and investing it well. And, um, so I, I think part of that, uh, essential to that, are, are critiques and having that community of artists um, who are on uh, mission um, of the same, same Well, hi Isaac. <laughs> Bye, Isaac. I guess we got a connection issue. Maybe he'll come back here. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question. I want to. I want to pose at this point, and this this doesn't relate necessarily just uh, to Christos, but uh, it gets to the whole question of art. And the other issue that I want to explore with you guys uh, is. Uh, you know, again, the context, you know, the art world and Christians in the art world and what are some of the challenges, what what do Christians, being a Christian, have to offer uh, in a significant way so that you could call something like this a Christos Collective. But I want to I read from the mission statement here. Um, it's, uh, our mission is to nurture and empower artists of Christian faith to reach excellence in their work through critique, exhibition, and outreach as a means to connect communities through art for meaningful conversations that are a catalyst for change both in the art world and the general public. Now, my my question has to do with this word excellence, which you know a lot of uh, profession Jews, and I'm in the academic world, uh, we don't really use it very much, but I know in the business world it's very it's very common and so forth. What would what would excellence in art you know, other than your your discipline, your your going public, your pushing everybody kind of to do their best. But what would be excellence in art from a uniquely Christian perspective? I, I take it we're talking sort of about creating a kind of art or a way of showing art or even a vision of art uh, that that flows directly from this from the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, perhaps we could say, and and what I, I guess, can you unpack pack that word excellence a little bit more in terms of what it would actually look like? Okay, I think I can start with that, Carl. Um, it was it was Francis Schaeffer who said that good art is art that infects you. So that's a word that left me when I read that. I thought art of excellence or effective art is art that penetrates you. It's when you experience it, whether it's something that you're viewing or hearing or feeling or interacting with. If that art enters you in a way that you're infected by it, it doesn't ever leave you. So art of excellence beyond having what most people would consider technical excellence, whether it's a good painting or something, it's to us it's more than that. It's, it's a work of art that um, will actually change someone's life. I mean, I can recall a piece that I did on war that I presented in a cyber, cyber platform similar to this in a classroom. And it kind of went viral in a sense that it resonated with a lot of what we were discussing about some of the emotional issues of war. And since then, and that's been years ago, um, I've had people ask me if they could have uh, use that image for some of their lectures uh, in the background or in their books and stuff. To me, that work then has reached a sense of excellence. Whether the technical issues of it um, were perceived as technically ex excellent or not really didn't matter as much as the impact that it had. Okay. So does that make sense for difference? Yeah, the impact. So there's a, commuti there's a real communication going on. Uh, I teach this course, which... Um, you know, I, I think as you know, Sandy, uh, I teach it regularly. It's called uh, Art, Thought, and Spirituality. And it gets into this broad kind of theme underlying modernism about the spiritual in art. And we do deal with the, with the whole issue of, of Christian art, though a lot of modern art was influenced by a different kind of movement known as theosophy. Uh, but, the, but most people think of art, I, I think particularly in America, you know, as either... It's, it's something somebody does uh, that has some kind of visual attraction. But there's also this real tendency to commodify art because the question is, okay, is this per how important is this person and how much is it worth? Uh, and uh, 
that that sort of over that commodification of art as being something that's a means to an end rather than uh, a, a a vehicle, an avenue by which the spirit grabs you and censors this transformation that goes on in your own spirit as a viewer. You know, I'm not a, uh, a practicing artist. Uh, you know, my wife Sunny is a practicing artist, and I know kind of how her mind works and, and thought, you know, I tend to process differently, but I know great art is something that really, as you say, it, it, it grabs me, it transforms me, you know, I mean, in some ways it was, I, I looking at certain well-known pieces of modern art, particularly the work of Magritte, number of years ago was the one that really got me on this quest to try to bring a narrative into art you know through my teaching and through engaging artists and do, having the kind of conversation we're doing right now so uh, it's, I hear what you're saying about impact uh, mm -hmm. and this is the one thing I try to stress with my students a lot you know and when I talk to other artists I said you know it's not just about you it's not just about the level of expression it's like you're in a process of Communication, a relationship, uh, interpenetration. I don't mean that in a sexual sense, but spiritually, there's an interpenetration going on through your art, and you're you're in a relationship with that person who's going to be affected by it in some mm -hmm. particular way. So that's what I hear you saying, and 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 that's me a very good argument for why uh, people who come from a Christian background, uh, and you know, a lot of people, you know. Who call themselves Christians? You know, Jesus said in the end, a lot of people will, will say, "Lord, Lord," and said, "I didn't know them." So, I mean, it's this, it's this transformative process that's going on through the art and the transformative uh, impact upon the world around us and other people in their lives and so forth. You know, I mean, there are stories I think we could all share about how people unexpectedly sometimes have been, you know, uh, in connected in, in unique ways to our, to one's art. Katina, what, what, what do you think about uh, what excellence means? Mm. Well, pretty similar to what Sandy was saying. Um, I, not only technically excellent, that's kind of the, the basis, but anyone can be that way, but just that um, the artist's intention, they go into it with intention. Uh, no offense, I know there's lots of popular artists that just say, oh, get whatever you want out of my work. And that's that's a cop-out. I mean, there's obviously things going on within you that you're putting forth on the canvas or the, the film or whatever medium you're using. But um, there there has to be some some intention. I mean, Artists have different methodology, methodologies on how, how they reach intention, but um, you need to know that you are putting forth some of your soul when you're, when you're making art, and that will be communicated to your viewers in this strong sense, and they will get something out of it. I mean, which also means that we'll have to be very careful about what we're portraying. I mean, you can only control intent so much, but I, I think the power of what Christian art can be or Christians making art is that, I mean, the Holy Spirit is automatically infused in what you're making because it is it is your soul and he's within us. So he's within the work and he's um, going forth and going to be communicating to those people in such powerful ways through this work, probably more powerfully than um, other work that doesn't have the intention, it doesn't have the spirit. Um, of course, you know, I believe, like, there's probably dark spirits out there that are working on people uh, via other types of art, and in the same way, uh, and Christian and there's art. Dark, and there's dark art, too. I mean, you yeah. See, yeah. Yeah. Um, Isaac, do you have some thoughts about this, about excellence in art? Uh, um, how we really kind of uh, put flesh on that concept? Yeah. Um, one of my, uh, there's a quote I like, um, and I, I can't remember who it is, who said it, and I'm going to paraphrase, but it, it's something about um, art is the only field in which uh, you can not do a very good job and still be called an artist. Um, so I have pretty strong feelings about not only craftsmanship, um, 
But like Tina was saying, the concept um, behind it is, is a is a very strong part of that. Um, and intentionality. Um, in, in, in any other field, if you're going to do something excellently, you've got a plan set forth, you've got an idea, and uh, and you, you go out and you build it, and you make it um, you make it happen, and you do it to the best of your abilities. You don't um, you know you don't do something halfway and, and call it good. And uh, I feel the same way about art. Um, whether that be representational art or non-representational art, and we still thoughtfully consider each step, each um, uh, element of, of whatever you're creating, and um, and be editorial. I mean, cut stuff out if you have to uh, redo stuff. And that was a, one of the hardest things for me to learn was to go back into a section of a, of a painting that I had spent hours and hours on and paint over it. Um, but I think that editorial process is so huge um, and it all it comes back to critique. I mean getting other people's input. Alright, well, let, let's talk a little bit about the process of what's going on with uh, Christos Collective and uh, kind of how the way in which the organization is structured and how that structure and what goes on within that structure uh, facilitates this uh, this ideal of, of excellence or let's just say uh, impact. Um, I think something that Katina said too was um, important that I would like to frame a little bit about the community. You know, we consider ourselves um, an internal community and I know in our vision we're uh, anticipating going out into a community. So I think the way that we're starting to develop in fellowship and prayer and critique, um, this is how our com community is building. And once we feel a, um, a solid foundation ourselves, I think we're going to emanate out into the culture. And I think one of the key points to us coming together was to um, have this practice of critique. I mean, we're all artists making art at different levels. We all stepped up to the plate to say we're not at excellence. Um, and we're kind of glad we're not because we want to come together to reach that goal um, as a group together with the influence of the Holy Spirit, with God's blessing on it. So the critique is probably one of the um, major aspects right now. I mean, I can see that taking um, a lower priority in the future as we start getting more exhibitions. But at the beginning points to have us come together, um, the critique is very valuable. We are uh, quite a diverse group of uh, different mediums. You know, we have quilters and textile workers, painters, installation artists, you know, poets. So we're, we're trying to uh, just continue to share among ourselves until we can get that to come together where we can see it coming in together as one showing. Um, we have made the commitment to introduce ourselves in a major exhibition that at this point has one scheduled event in the fall and we hope in 2016 to have it placed in other places in other parts of the country. But um, we chose a topic among ourselves based on our first uh, critique and review of everybody's work. It seemed that many of us had a, a similar element in the intention of our work. And that was, as Isaac had said earlier in his work, um, an element of reclaiming. So we, we chose that as a title for um, all of us to go off and to make new work um, that's either a continuation of what we've been doing or possibly a new birthing of a, a new concept for someone or new materials to try. And I'm going to let the other two speak about it, but it is quite a challenge. Uh, I did put a heavy size on the piece. It's very large. It's about 37 by 54, maybe. I think that's around that neighborhood. And it's a frame. And we are trying to go um, all visual art this time, all the, with the consistency of the same frame. But not only the title and then the restrictions of the format um, have placed all of the artists in the group then to take where they've been and where they want to go and put that together in this work. So we've just started to critique um, in process our concepts. We're not even probably onto the canvases yet or on, within the frames. So. Um, I can share how that started for me, and then I think Isaac and Katina can um, talk about how the critiques led to 
where we're going to go with these new pieces that will bring us together in our first exhibition. Um, I built we built the frames together. We made that a fellowship gathering. Someone in our group we share our resources. We had a table saw and a nice garage space where we could um, go there and cut the wood. And Isaac and I have skills in the in the wood shop. Um, so we just got on the saws and chopped away and got everybody's frames all cut and ready to roll. I mean, I think that in itself, that experience was um, something that brought us really close together. Um, and then we put the frames together, and I put mine on my wall, and I know Katina's, um, I shared some time with her putting that on the wall, and that empty frame stared back at us. And that's what we're challenged with right now, is um, how are we going to take these influences that Katina mentioned, um, pass it through ourselves, and deliver it to this frame. So Katina and I said, maybe you can share a little bit on um, how that felt and where you're going with that. Okay. Katina, you... Um... Well, mine, uh, my frame is going to be an addition to a series I've been working on, um, and just oil painting. I'm being pretty traditional. I usually like to go crazy in lights and cameras action and space, but I'm just going to go to something nice and on the wall since that was required. So um, uh, my series is going to be just kind of a, a retelling of some biblical stories uh, where women are the main characters and kind of using this idea of like a woman's hair as a symbol for a spiritual connection uh, between humanity and the divine, which is a theme I work a lot in. And um, so I guess as far as reclaiming goes, it's it would be reclaiming these old stories in a more contemporary context with, um, can, you know, a mixture of old and new semiotics. And so that's that's where I'm headed. And Isaac, uh, actually I heard you uh, last weekend talking about reclaiming in, in the context of materials as well, is that right? Uh, yeah, I do use a lot of reclaimed materials. Um, I'm not sure that I'll be doing that so much um, on this piece for the Reclaim show. Um, <laughs> ironically, kind of partly because I do use reclaimed materials so often, it was just... Um, I didn't want it to be um, you know, just a fallback, um, so I wanted to work more conceptually about reclaiming. And actually, something you said, Carl, in uh, one of our meetings about um, um, oh, about uh, not iconoclasm, but um, uh, just kind of being a you know, what Jesus did and, and who he was, was there's a certain aggression there that went against the, the, the paradigms. And the, the image that came to mind was um, the temple being torn down in that whole analogy. And I kind of wanted to reclaim that, um, that part of who Christ was. Uh, you know, so often, especially here in Denver and Boulder, Jesus, a lot of people like Jesus because they think, oh, he was a, a, a nice guy and a, a good teacher and, and a prophet maybe even, but they don't really tend to think of him as, um, you know, the guy that came to bring uh, the sword and to you know, separate um, the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. And, and so my piece is uh, I, I kind of want to reclaim the, um, the ferocity of Christ, I guess, and how he uh, how he came to set us free from religion and, and dogma. And, 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 I, and I know when we're talking about the visual arts, you really have to see it. And this is yeah. these are all works in process, progress now. In fact, they're just beginning in the process. Some are more along, further along than ever. But you, since Sandy was talking about kind of critiquing concepts. Uh, do you do you have? Can you describe in any you know vague sort of stumbling way what uh, reclaiming you know a vision of Christianity? Let's let's let me call it the militant the militant Christ. You know, which is really part of 
I mean, it's not only you know a central theme in scripture, but it's you know part of the whole tradition, particularly the uh, the Jewish heritage out of which uh, you know Jesus Jesus speaks and in which he first appears and so forth. Uh, so I was just wondering what if you if you could kind of give us a taste or a clue what that might look like in your mind. Or maybe uh, yeah, so I, I have a pretty good idea of where I'm headed with this. Um, uh, I really love the imagery of, of um, the lion of the tribe of Judah to represent Christ. And lions are ferocious. They're um, they're very intimidating animals. And so um, I'll definitely use a lion kind of in a, um, an attacking um, pose and, and posture um, to represent Christ, and um, I, I've kind of been experimenting with layering here lately, and um, so another image I, I really liked um, and love about in, in the scripture is um, the veil in the temple being torn, um, kind of releasing God's spirit into the world. Um, and so there will be a layer over that um, kind of representative of that concept. Okay, um, Sandy, can can we go back to the the whole question of process and so forth? And Katina was talking about intentionality, uh, and in in these critiques, and you know, you know, I as as a, somebody who you know watches artists and you know like to hang out with artists, you know, I guess like some people like to hang out with major league sports and so forth. Uh, <laughs> But uh, you know, I I've heard over the years, you know, kind of different comments about what the word critique means. Uh, we had a uh, a thing down at uh, the Converge uh, site last year, where there were a number of artists uh, got together, uh, and some of those were local artists, but others came from there, and they were talking about, you know. They didn't like the idea of critique because in art school, critique very often meant you know you start, you know you start getting competitive and bashing each other, and sometimes even get nasty. So uh, one one wag who wasn't an artist uh, that was attending said, well, "Why don't you call it a critical?" So that's what they did. Uh, but but I take it that kind of people getting together and saying oh, that's no good you better do this you know shape up and so forth that's not obviously that's not the approach of Christos Collective but at the same time you know if you're striving toward excellence like like coaching you know I mean, you have to basically I mean you have to basically you know be honest and say well that's not gonna work you know I know I know artists talk about that all the time with does it work or not work writers do that as well my, my son's a novelist you know, and I've I've seen him getting together with other novelists, uh, you know, other published novelists, and you know, say, well, that's just not going to work in that situation. And say, well, why is it going to work? Well, it just didn't work, you know. And so, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the process of critique in a maybe even a technical way, how it works in the group, and how you see that as uh, something that can really bring about the effect, the Im the impact that you're you're looking to bring about. Okay. Yeah, um, even when I uh, teach at the college level too, you know, a critique can be approached um, in a number of different ways. And yes, sometimes it can get out of hand. But with the right structure, we want to look at it um, both objectively, what we see formally, you know, as artists um, in a group where the artist eye has been trained, that we can go down a list of um, formal aspects within the work to help an artist see what's being communicated through the choices that they've made formally. Yeah. And then we can also talk about it from a subjective sense about, wow, when I see this, I either see or feel or um, get a reading on this that, that communicates something to me. It's a dialogue to help the artist get in a position to understand they may be very close to their work and don't quite know what it projects out. So in a critique, when you look at it from both perspectives, from the objective and the subjective, you're helping them to see it technically in a formal aspect, but then you're also providing them with a reading information that tells the artist um, what the viewer is um, getting from the work. And the intention of this is to help the artist 
um, I like to use the word to claim what they want to defend. When they look at their work and they say, oh, if you're interpreting that this way and I didn't want that to be in my work, they may reconsider um, how to back away from some of those elements. Um, or if they hear you say something that affirms some of their intention, they may question, is it too loud, is it too soft, where do we go from here? Um, as a group of the artists in Christos, now, our intention is not at all to critique in a sense of bashing because we want to bring each other to the excellence level. So we're going to encourage um, this artist to understand what they're working so closely with, um, how it's emanating out to uh, viewers, especially trained eye viewers. I mean, it's always good at some point to invite someone in who's not trained. Like my husband's not an artist, and sometimes he'll look at my art and give me a, a read on it or a comment that I'll stop and go, wow, thanks, I like that. Yeah. I'm glad it has that touch to it. Or, ooh, I didn't particularly want it to go in that direction. So um, I think a critique, my main goal in um, critiquing with students especially is for them to take a stand um, with their own work, to either defend their work or to find a way that they can clarify exactly what they're doing with their work. Okay, and how does this, oh, so let me follow up with that a little bit. If it when you got a collective, this is not just uh, you know an art class where you're where you've got individual students who are doing different things that are kind of learning uh, professional skills and techniques, but you're actually again to go back to the intentionality, and it's not just you know Isaac's intentionality or Katina's intentionality or anybody else's intentionality in the group. You don't you don't have this kind of pastiche of individual intentionalities. But in, but in some ways, as a collective, you're trying to bring about uh, a kind of corporate intentionality. And it would seem to me that the, the way in which you do critique uh, is designed to, uh, to affect that and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was just wondering, since you're able to articulate this process and you've been an art teacher for so long, you know, how, what is, there's something distinctive about this group. It's not just a bunch of individual practicing artists getting together and kind of doing their thing and people getting putting in their professional two cents. You're really trying to get something to come out of it as as, as sort of events in the emission statement. So I was just wondering how the process, a critique as you see it evolving within the Christos Collective is going to have this larger, more dynamic impact. I, th I think... Um and I think the other two will agree with this too. When it's the topic that's already been put on the table here too. As artists of Christian faith, we have a, a worldview and a perspective that we want to share, not only to process it ourselves and have the first hand experience of it, but also to share it out in the world. And I think our critiques um, have a special burden with that to find ways to help each other uh, formulate that in a way that it's not too uh, too loud or too soft or underplayed or um, just a one-liner. I mean, there are many kinds of critique language that we use that we want to kind of hone in on the topic. The fact that as a collective that we're all working on that one same uh, theme of reclaiming, I think has helped the critiques because we have a topic that we're also critiquing towards. You know, but also we have some artists in the group who have used text in the past in their work, and um, I notice in our critiques we're as a group trying to suggest possibly that too much text could be too much. You know, it be, could be read too quickly. And one of the goals of a work of excellence is to have a viewer uh, stand and spend time with the art, not read it and walk on. And a lot of times that's finding that very very thin threshold of what is too much or too obvious and what is obscured in the work. And I think in our critiques, we, we're trying to do that in a, uh, a very um, pointed way. And we're trying to make sure that the work is coming together to um, be sure that it holds the attention of the viewer, that the, it's not only a one-way conversation, that it may ask some questions at the same time as presenting information. So uh, I think in our critiques with that kind of um, purpose and directive that we are different than in a classroom. It's not just about the individual artist's work. We're making work as a collective. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, any, uh, Katina or um, 
Or Isaac, do you want to add to that? Do you want to explore that a little bit? How you've been critiqued? In fact, mm -hmm. uh, it was actually in I think a, your critique on Saturday when I was present that uh, you made some of those remarks I just referenced. What what? Uh, how did how, is that what Sandy's saying? Does that jive with what you're experiencing? How does your not only the experience of what people are saying about your art, but also what you're saying about others' art? How did you, as an actual practicing artist who's very much into this particular kind of vision you articulated before, how do how do you experience critique? I guess I'll go. Um, I had, I mean, uh, going to grad school, I mean, there there was many tears, many times. I am, I usually don't cry, I mean, but it's definitely a humbling experience. Um, yeah, some of our critiques in grad school, I mean, ended in name calling and running out of the room like a Disney princess at times, <laughs> but like, so it's very educational in that sense, but um, uh, you, this group, luckily, very respectful and considerate. So there are a lot of hard things I think we're saying to people about things maybe they've done forever. You know, whether it's the text or the, um, who knows what what it is. But um, I think that Christos is definitely keeps in mind. You know. That we honor Christ, so we're honoring these people as people, and that is very refreshing for me after being in some of these critiques where it ended in, you know, fights and terrible things and people needing to take days off. So, um, but it does build you, and anyone who's been through that, even if it is harsh, if it's not harsh, I think if you pick yourself up and keep going and take what you need to take from those people and maybe not take what you don't want to take then you'll be you'll be fine and a lot of times some of the work that I've had has been bashed in a critique and then lay people non-artists kind of were just walking by that's their favorite piece I mean it was totally demolished in this area but it was totally uplifted in another area so you just kind of have to I guess listen to who you are, what you want to project, and listen to God, of course, as your priority, and that helps. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to get your uh, individual takes. Isaac, what about you? Uh, yeah, my, my critique experiences were probably a lot more positive, but I didn't go to Cranbrook, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I always really love critiques because um, it, I think more than um, I guess uh, I mean I always identified with my artwork very very deeply but um, I wanted it to be really good and so um, I think I think that's that's a, a kind of a common goal and a, a common understanding in Cresos is that uh, we all want our artwork to be excellent, and so the critique, even though it might sting, really serves that purpose. Um, and well, I'll have to be honest, I've heard some critiques in your group, but I haven't heard anything stinging yet. So oh. uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't really I wasn't really trying to use that as an example. I was just because I I do I have seen a much more kind of positive, supporting, suggestive. Yeah. You know, kind of approach to thing, and you know, this goes out in the academic world too. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's like it's part it's part of the game. It's a blood sport. You want to tear the other person down. It's not, you know, it doesn't build up uh, to you know, uh, uh, use the language of Paul. So yeah, yeah, um, and, and I, I think something that Sandy was saying about uh, wanting people to linger that really uh, struck a chord with me. I, I remember the first time I saw. Um, and Anselm Kiefer in person. It was uh, fuel rods in St. Louis, and I, 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 I spent the rest of my time in the museum in front of that with a big silly grin on my face. And they ended up having to kick me out. Um, and like, if that's what we can, if that's what we can accomplish, um, that would be so awesome because it's not just really great painting it's 
or a really great art piece is something that has um, the message of the gospel embedded in it. And I, I think that's really something that people need to soak in. One, one, uh, one question for this, and somebody can answer this quickly. Uh, do you think uh, do you think non-artists, i.e., viewers, belong in critique processes, or is, should it only be among artists? Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it depends on um, the intention of the time that you're putting into it. I mean, if if we're trying to move some work along in process, um, I think it's helpful to have trained eyes helping you, um, kind of like the eyes in the back of your head, helping you move it forward. I think when we get closer to completion sometimes, um, it's really nice to invite a non-artist um, to come in and take a look. I mean, it kind of catches you off guard. Um, it may affirm things. It may challenge you at the last moment. But I think when you're near completion, that could be quite an asset, actually. Mm -hmm. I would have to say that, I mean, one of my beefs with, like, the art um, circle is I think it has become ridiculously um, ingrown to the fact where um, going, to, going to museums anymore, I just see people, like, they look at something for two seconds and they walk away. I mean... I know that that's an element of training and that's an element of our culture today being like so fast paced and um, like selfishly motivated but uh, at a point it is kind of the artist's job to bring you in like and, and art will still do that a good piece that can be the simple as anything can pull someone in and invite them to look for longer than those couple seconds but a lot of work out there um, I see, like, you know, I see it, and I'm not even captivated by it. I don't want to really read about it. I just think it's kind of boring. So I think that it's good to have both um, groups in mind when you're when you're making work because, again, it's so largely subjective. But I think to really grow art in general, we have to let non-artists in, and we have to let them maybe in on critiques or... Um, just be more open among ourselves, talking to them. You know, if we're at a gallery event, don't talk to your friend artist. Go talk to the people who just wandered in, kind of thing, and invite them to participate and, you know, share about your piece or whatever. So I think it's important to get their perspective, or art is just going to die and be totally about the upper 1% of people who are buying it for um, investment pur purposes. So right. we don't want that. And the 99% who are trying to paint for the one percent you know with your <laughs> fantasy down like winning the lottery okay yeah. uh, well we're uh, we're almost out of time here so I'll just turn it back to Sandy are there any kind of final comments Sandy you want to make uh, observations uh, I can just say that the Christus Collective does have a website it's mm -hmm. uh, com, right I think it's dot org dot org that's right dot org yeah. uh, Anyway. And I would I would invite people to you know visit that. There's a Christos Collective Facebook page also. Um, we're just starting with our newsletters and making sure that the website is um, up to par. We're, we've got some of our work up there and our artist statements and stuff, our calendar of events. So yes, we invite people to come and explore us, but to not again the word that we've been using linger with us, linger with us also. You know, spend some time watching us grow. You know, just don't pop in and see where we're at. You know, come back and check us out later and, and see um, actually what God's hand is doing when he reclaims, when he reclaims the talents that he's given each one of us, when he moves us forward as a group that he brought together. You know, we have gelled together and, and I just invite everybody to kind of keep an eye out for us. I mean, we have a new way of communicating what we feel is the Christian faith. You know, we, we don't want to um, struggle against the past of what was um, presented. We have a new way of looking at we're young people and, and we're young at heart if we're not. And we, we're experiencing culture as it is right now and we're communicating it through our art. So we, we do want the public to come and, and grow with us and watch us and, and to hear the voice that we want to share um, and possibly even see a new face to what Christianity, Christianity is today and in the arts. 
All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, that was wonderful, and uh, I'll uh, I'll let you know or get you, as soon as this gets processed. I'll send you the link, and you can you can play it back and send it out to other people, and uh, you can link it in whatever format. So, again, that was very stimulating conversation, and I just want to uh, express my appreciation. We want to thank you too also, Carl. Thank you for giving us this platform to share our aspirations. Okay. All right. Good night.